Good morning. Welcome to our worship service. We're in Bell Chapel. Things have changed here in Bell Chapel. We've been going through renovation here at First Baptist Church. Bell Chapel now has uh, vinyl flooring that has is in the image wood. Uh, the walls are yellow. Uh, very beautiful in here in Bell Chapel. The whole church is going through renovation right now. But I wanted to welcome you to this service. This service is a time for us as a church to come together to celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are so excited that we have the ability to do just that through this special medium. But also, I want to welcome you if you're someone that's not a member at First Baptist Church Britain, and I want you to come and worship with us as you watch uh, or listen to this uh, service. It, and I want you to understand, we here at First Baptist Church Root have a, a love and desire for God. And we want you to come and understand that as well. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to listen to the songs, listen to the prayers, but also listen to the sermon. See, your sins separate you from God. Our God who is amazing, that loves us, that sent his son to die on the cross to take the place of our sin so that we can have a relationship with him and be with him forever. If you don't know Jesus in this way, I want to encourage you to listen very gently as God speaks to you during this time. Again, I want to welcome everyone to our time of worship today. As we gather today separately, I believe that we can relate to Psalm 84 more now than ever. How lovely are your dwelling places, O Lord of hosts. My soul longed and even yearned for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh seek for joy to the living God. The bird also has found the nest, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand outside. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, how blessed is the man who trusts in you. I you to sing with me. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of my Lord. For my soul longs and even waits for you. For Oh, 
we'll pray with you. Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for this time, Father, that even while we might be at home and watching this on a TV screen or an iPad or an iPhone, Father, or whatever the means might be, that we can truly worship you, that we can sing praises to you and glorify your name. And I pray for us, Father, as we get ready to dive into your word, pray that you would be a brother captain and that you would give him the words to say and that it would be your words and not his words, Father. I pray it's all in your holy and most proper name. Amen. Today's text, church, is from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. There is, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Church, that word there at the beginning of verse 1, condemnation, to condemn, what that means is to be judged, to be sentenced, to be proven guilty. And even in some places, it is to be looked at with strong disapproval. That's what we are without Christ. We are condemned. We are sentenced. We are found guilty, as we saw last week with what Brother Kevin and I preached, that we were sinners and we were enemies before God. But God demonstrated His great love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And now, if we are in Christ Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So while we are apart, we long to be in God's courts in this place, but it's still incumbent upon us to offer Him our worship. And we can do that right now.
God is an awesome God. He loves us and cares for us. We as a church are still going through a time of, of trying to find out exactly how God is going to lead us and, and allow us to minister under these unique circumstances. I know things are starting to open up. Uh, businesses here in town are able to open up. And, but there is still the reality that the virus is strong and the virus is out there. We here in Alabama haven't really seen a decline, especially in our local area. So we are still faced with the pandemic, the coronavirus. We as a church want to protect our people. We're going to continue to focus and use different medias to be able to get the message of Christ out. I don't believe this is a reality of us being dictated by the government not to be able to worship. I believe the government has given us guidelines to help us understand what is safe. And we here at First Baptist Church, our goal is to make sure that our people are safe. A large number of our people here in our congregation uh, our senior adults. And that is that one group of people that's being affected the most about, uh, from the coronavirus. Matter of fact, here in Alabama, out of all the deaths that we've had, we've had 75% of them over the age of 65. So we want to protect our people and we want to protect in, in the same way. We are trying to be true to our governor's uh, leadership and we are not going to have service uh, this week. Our deacons are meeting, and they're going to be helping develop a plan of when we can do that, but that is something that will take place in the future. Our governor has asked us not to, to meet uh, at least until after the, uh, the 15th, so we will not be having services this coming week for sure. Uh, we, and that's hard because that's, a mother, that's Mother's Day. That's a special time for uh, us as church members to, to come together and, and, and uh, celebrate mothers and how special mothers are to us. But we will not be having our regular service. Uh, but we will uh, still have a worship service via CD, via the mail, via um, the Internet uh, because we want to continue to minister and preach the word of Christ and allow God to affect our lives in that way. Today I want us to look at some scriptures from Romans chapter 8. We're going to look at the first four verses. I've entitled this just condemned. Now the reason why I think this is an important scripture is because there are a lot of Christians that are struggling in their walk with Christ. They're struggling with their old nature. They're struggling with their life before Christ and their desires to have sin in their life. Uh, they're, they're struggling with this concept that, that their lives are, are new and they're a new creature. They still have that pulling. And I think it's really the same thing that we see the Apostle Paul dealing with. As he writes this letter to the church at Rome, he, he's helping them understand that he still wages war between these two natures. And, and, and I think in saying that, we have to understand that there's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of struggle that we have as Christians in our daily walk. We, we look at things and we think to ourselves, well, I need to be a better Christian. I, I got to do right. I, I can't. Uh, allow myself and then when we do fall or succumb to that sin or, or those bad thoughts or those things we allow this wave of, of guilt that hits us I, I think some, some of us to some degree are struggling with this when it comes to attending church right now we can't attend church but we need to the Bible says thou shalt not forsake thyself from assembling but we're not able to right now is it a sin not to go we'll see I think that's not real. And the reason why I think that's not real in, in, in this circumstance, now if you're a person that's just lazy, that didn't go to church because of that, that that's different. But this is a extreme circumstances here, and, and I think there's some guilt that is associated with that. But there shouldn't be. And, and even in the sense of not just how we interpret that and try to apply to our lives because of what we've been taught growing up, and, and we feel like we're missing that God ain't going to bless us or something because we're not in church. We have to be careful of that. 
that, that, that's in the realm of guilt. I believe God works in the realm of conviction to draw us into, more intimate and more real with him in a relationship. The, the other side, Satan wants you to feel guilty, feel destroyed, feel beaten down, and that doesn't help us in that relationship and that intimacy. I, I heard a, a quote this week, and it's really been a neat quote, and I've shared it with a couple of different people. Um, and I'm not a big person that likes to, to quote, especially from Facebook, that's where I saw it. Uh, and it, it said this, religion is a man sitting in a church service thinking about fishing. A relationship is a man fishing thinking about Jesus. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that because, okay, it's okay to run off and go fishing all the time now and, and don't go to church but go fishing. That's not what I'm saying. But when we're transformed by the Word of God, our lives are made new and afresh. We are new creatures. We're in a relationship with Christ. Our desire is to be intimate and more real with Him. I don't go to church because I have to go to church. I go to church because I get to go to church because it affects my relationship with God. It affects my relationship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, that's something different. But I think we can take it from that realm and also carry it to the bigger issues of, of, of sin, of things that we have, have come to, that we've submitted to, that we've given ourselves over to. And we've got to be careful of that because we are born again Christians. We, we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And now by faith, my love, my focus is only on Christ. The problem is many people don't have that type of relationship. They don't know Christ. They're cultural Christians. I've used that term many times before. Cultural Christians are people that aren't really Christians, but because the culture dictates, they take on the image of what a Christian would be. And they don't have a relationship with Christ. And, and saying that, I, I think this scripture really hones in on some powerful understandings for true Christians, not cultural Christians. Cultural Christians aren't going to get this. They're still focused in on the flesh. They're still focused in on, on the world and, and pleasing themselves, ultimately. But as a Christian, we have new life in Christ. And that's what Paul says here. Look with me in God's Word. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it is, as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin he condemned sin in the flesh. Look there in verse 4. So that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. This is powerful. And the reason why I said this is, is powerful because Paul is saying something that we need to hear, we need to be reminded of. We are not condemned. We are not condemned because we are in Christ Jesus. Remember in what Jesus said to his disciples? He says, I have not come to condemn, but to save. Jesus, he came not to judge us, not to, to pass judgment and tell us how bad we are and how terrible we are, but he, he came for the reality of saving us from those sins. He, he hung on that cross to help, to, to take away the sins, to be our substitute for our sins. That, that is that unconditional love that he has for us that he took the place of sin of the sin in our lives so we need to understand because we have been 
saved because we have this relationship we're not condemned so that should take out that whole realm of what guilt is about the, the sin that we used to have has been cleansed away the sin that we have now through sanctification through what Jesus has done has been removed the sin that I'll commit tomorrow as a Christian as a follower of Christ is no more I know that boggles our mind because we base everything on works. We've got to be good. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. And, and that's, that's the problem, though. And it goes to, to verse 2. It says, For the law of the Spirit of the life of Christ Jesus has set us free. See, we're not in bondage anymore to, the, what, as it says, the law of sin and of death. See, that's what the, the Old Testament law, that's what uh, the Mosaic law, that, that's what the whole purpose of the law is. The law can't save us. The only thing that can save us is the atoning death of Jesus Christ. And by us having that relationship with Jesus Christ, by placing our faith in, on him, not, not just by lip service, not by doing something, but truly opening up our hearts and allowing ourselves to know him and to, be, to, to grow in him, to be intimate with him, that's how we're saved. And he set us free from that. And, and listen, everything about the law emphasizes how we are not like God. Our shortcomings. But by knowing that, by understanding that, doesn't save us. It takes the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I mean, continue on. Verse 3, for the law could not do this. It's weak. I mean, that's what the, the law is weak because it's through the flesh that we see his power. But God, through Jesus Christ and his death and, and his atoning death, his substitutional death, because we deserve death because of our sins, for the wages of sin is death. Jesus died in our place. We have salvation. So the law is weak, but yet Jesus and his atoning death is the only thing that can save us. So sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. It's not saying that Jesus was sinful. It's he came in the image of man. He came here as man, but he did not sin. He did something we can't do. We have the nature of sin. We, we will sin. If you've seen a little baby, you've seen just how that child acts upon disobedience. Each one of us understand that we're all sinners. We've lied. We, we've stolen. We, we've told untruths. We've disobeyed our parents. We can go on and, and, and sin after sin after sin. And we can look upon ourselves and see that we are sinners. But Jesus came in the image of the flesh, came as man, and he lived that pure life that we couldn't live. And then he is the one that took on our sins in his purity, in his holiness, took on our sins, and he died for those sins. Making it where those sins are removed completely. And he is that offering. And because of that, Wow. We now can stand holy and righteous before God. This is something I've been wanting to talk about for weeks, and I've been sharing with you now for several weeks. He said, Brother Ken, we get it. We get the message. We understand Jesus is our substitute. Jesus, uh, through his death, uh, through his sacrifice on the cross, he, he saved us. He, he paid the price. He's our propitiation. We get it, Brother Kevin. And he said, and some of you might be thinking, why are we doing this week after week? Because we've got to get this rooted in who we are. We, we can't skirt around. There's too many people today that are trying to toss out this idea that Jesus was our substitute, that Jesus paid the price, that Jesus had to do that. He had to become sin. He had to die. 
We, we want religion, we want Christianity to be this warm, fuzzy feeling of, of high emotion. But we've got to get down to the particulars and look at the truth of what took place, and that is Jesus took our place, and that's his great love for us. But look back at verse 4. It can, the, he could do the requirement of fulfilling us that, what Jesus did. But look, it says, Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. See, the, the cultural Christian, the person that takes up on the image, and, and even the world in itself, they're living by the flesh. What makes them feel good? What makes uh, them feel um, empowered? What, what's pleasing to them? What, what feels good? But those that walk by the Spirit, and, the Spirit, and this concept is, is that when Jesus died on the cross, when he, he, he took away our sins, and now we stand righteous before God, but he did ascend into heaven 40 days after his, his resurrection, but he left for us his Spirit, the Spirit of God, the third part of the Trinity that lives inside of us, and that's how we're to live now. But it, only Christians can do this. A Christian lives in the realm of conviction, not, not guilt. Uh, the Christian doesn't live in the realm of feelings or what feels good, but in what the Spirit of God leads us to do. Uh, the, the, the cultural Christian lives in the realm of, hey, this is what's best for me, where the true Christian he is only interested in pleasing God the Father and being empowered by the Spirit to do that. Now, is that Christian going to struggle sometimes with sin? Yes, please hear that. He will. You will. I will. But because the Spirit lives in us, He draws us back to this. He, he doesn't guilt us into changing. He he. He builds us up. He leads us. And, and listen, God will discipline us. But he does it for a more intimate relationship. The intimacy. So that we can be true to the plans and the ways and the, and the will of God the Father. That's who we are now as Christians. And, and we look at this big picture right now and as we're in the middle of this pandemic and we ask ourselves, well, wait a minute, is this a judgment on God, from God on us? I think we have to be careful of that because of what we read here. For us as those that walk in the Spirit, those that are truly Christians, not cultural Christians, we're not condemned in this way. He's not judging us in this way. Now, I do believe it might cause us to discipline us, to draw us out of some of the things that are negative, that aren't where we need to be. And, and, and that's happened for many people. But on the other side, it, it could be a judgment on the lost world. It, it could be a judgment even on cultural Christians. And, and the reason why I say that is because their world is being turned upside down to show them how lost they are. Now, I'm not saying that this is a judgment on the world, but I do believe there's a reality here that things are hard and tough. People are dying. People are sick. People are losing their jobs. Our economy is upside down. The norm is totally different than before. And God has allowed this to happen and my prayer is that for us as Christians, it will draw us into a more real, more deep relationship with him. Let me remind you, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. How powerful that is. And that is a word we must hear today. May we bow together in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you for how you work in our lives. We thank you for the power of your word and as your word speaks to us. Lord, we thank you for the music. We thank you for the opportunity of your word being proclaimed. 
And Lord, now we ask that your spirit will lead us and guide us to a crisis of belief, to adjustments that we need to make to be true to you in our relationship with you. If there's a person that is not a Christian, Lord, help them understand how their sins condemn them. Lord, help cultural Christians understand how they're really lost, they're not really Christians, and how their sins condemn them. And Lord, help us as true followers of yours that are in a relationship with you, live out, live a life without guilt, and live out a spirit-filled life. Being obedient and real in our relationship with you. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for watching this or listening to this. And may God bless you and empower you through these very challenging times.